come over here with me, ma'am, okay? I called as soon as this shit happened. I, was I understand. Like, this doesn't happen to me. I understand. I go to Bradley. Like, why would this happen to me? Okay. So here's what I'm going to have you do. If you can uh, maybe help Pyro do CPR on that one right now. You tell me. I'm right here. Okay. Just hang tight right here. Has anybody gotten all your information? No. No you one has. Um, have um, someone, your friend took my license. Do you have a driver's license? Your friend took my license. Okay. I'm just, I'm just going to write it down here. Okay. Just to let you know I got body cameras. Every, okay. okay. What is your first name? S T E P H A N I E. Middle initial? I don't have one. Okay, and last name? Melgoza, M E L G O Z A. Phone number? Okay. Yes. Sir. Can you, uh, were you leaving the bar? Were you coming this I down the road? I was coming. I was coming here. Okay. You know, I had just gotten my night started. So so, were you going this direction yes. or this direction? I was coming this direction. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna have you do. Um, yes. Please let's call just me. get let's get away from the scene a little bit. Yes. Let them do their thing. Okay. Yes. This is your car, right? The yes, correct, sir. the red yes, car. Yes. You were the only one in the vehicle. I'm the only one. Okay. Come over here to my spot car. Okay. Yep. You, can you take your purse off and just set that on here? We got him. Yep. Do you have anything illegal on you? Yes. I have marijuana in, in your purse. purse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you had any marijuana tonight? No. Okay. Can you set those on the car for me for me? My vape shoe? Yep. Yep. Okay. Set that down there. And my phone. And your phone? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right. Just come over here. Just put your hands on the car. He's got a pass search before I put you in my car, okay? Okay. No pockets or anything? Oh, no, no. Okay. No until we figure out how we're going to handle this, I'm going to have you sit uncuffed in the back seat of my car. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get you out. We're going to probably do some field sobriety tests and all that. Okay. i got some more questions for you. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm going to have you sit down just so we're out of the roadway, okay? Mm -hmm. Come right over here. Yes. Look, just scoot that over for me, okay? Do you want to do it? Thank there you. we go. Are you hurt at all or need, or need medics yourself? Uh, no, sir. Because your entire, I mean, your car's pretty beat up, so I'm making sure. Do I'm you, okay. Are you bleeding anywhere? Um, no, I'm okay. Is that little blood splatter on your hands, from, maybe from your glass? I see you got glass cut all over you. Do I? Okay. I, I think I'm okay. Okay, all right. Okay. Hang tight a minute. Right okay, suspect, that's her. She's, uh, they're probably going to call both of them. So. But yeah, go check out her car. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> all right. You never answered me about my car. I'm like, I've seen Mario, so how do I get my car? It's my well, your car is totaled. It's what? Your car is totaled. Totaled? Totaled? Totaled, right. Okay, so how do I get it to your speedometer? You don't. So, what do you mean? I don't go to school tomorrow, is what you're telling me? No, ma'am. You want me to be honest with you? You're going to jail. You don't have a bond. You killed two people tonight. I don't think you understand that. You do not have a bond. You are not getting out of jail. Your car is property of East Peoria Police Department because it's a crime scene. It killed two people tonight. You are clueless with that. Clearly, I've already explained this to you. You're going to jail for reckless homicide tonight. You're going to jail for aggravated DUI for killing two people. That's what's going on. So no, you're not going to school tomorrow. You're not getting your car out of impound. Did you just hear what I just told you? You said I'm not going tomorrow. I'm talking about Tuesday. Did you hear what I said you that said you I'm going to jail tomorrow? Did you? You're going to jail right. when we're down here. Yes. Did you understand what I told that you killed two people tonight? Yes. Yeah, so I'm just wondering when I can go to school. Okay. We're done. You're all on body camera being completely careless about killing two people tonight. You could care less. That's sad and pathetic and horrible all at the same time. Can you say that as a cop? Yes, ma'am, I can. Okay, so can I ask where I can go back to school? Yes, ma'am. Take a deep breath, long, hard, steady blow. A little bit harder for me, a little bit harder. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. You're a Bradley student. I graduate in four weeks. You're a point two six four, okay? Graduate. All right. Okay, go ahead and turn around for me and place your hands behind your back. You are under arrest for DUI. 
Over the course of the night, how much have you had to drink? I probably had about three drinks. What's what? What is three drinks? You like? Are we talking what type of drinks? Uh, just vodka. Vodka, straight vodka, or mixed drinks? Uh, vodka and water. So I was staying hydrated, you know, and okay. drinking. Mm -hmm. On the, like uh, right now, if you had me do a test, I think I would pass. Just like, not, don't test me, but I think I would pass. Okay. I'm going to be honest. We we are going to do those tests here in a little bit mm -hmm. because of certain standards, obviously we have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how long ago was your last drink, would you say? Uh, my last drink, I would say about 40 minutes. 40 minutes ago? Mm -hmm. Were you drinking anything while you are in the vehicle, or no. was the last drink at the bar? At the bar. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the least drunk you've ever been, 10 mm -hmm. being the most drunk you've ever been, where would you say you put yourself at right now? Five. Five. Because I've been very drunk. And right now, like, I see you, I see everyone, mm -hmm. I know the situation, you know what I mean? Like, I know I'm aware of okay. everything. Okay. Audrey used the remaining time to pack enough air for the three and a half minute dive. A kiss from Pepin, and Audrey took her final breath. I was keeping pretty careful track of the time, as I always do. I suppose I was 20 meters from the dive boat in a little skiff. I'm holding the line, and Pepin was doing the same also from the water, because we get to feel the vibration coming from the sled, just going under and brushing against the cable. So we have a way to determine more or less what's going on. When I look at Pepin, it was as if something was just not right. But on the other hand, nothing was wrong. doy la señal de que están 80 metros ya pasó por delante de mí que estaba iba bien perfecto I had the feeling something was not right before she hit the bottom it takes decades of experience but if you look at a line you can see how it's oscillating in the water column this can be caused by current but it also be caused by the tension on the line and the fluctuating tension on the line. And it just didn't look quite right. A minute and a half into the dive, to tell Audrey she was nearing the 170 meter mark, Pascal clanged his pipes. I saw Audrey arriving like usual, you know, fast. At one minute and 42 seconds, Audrey's sled reached the bottom of the line. And then uh, the first bad surprise, when she finished to open this tank, which was uh, supposed to, to fill the lift bag, uh, nothing happened. Yolanda Saldivar is one of the most hated women in all of American history. She murdered our beautiful Selena Quintanilla in 1995. Here are all the events that led up to the murder. Get this, Yolanda Saldivar was a nurse. So somebody who was meant to help people survive and live and take care of them, she ended up murdering her? Crazy. In 1991, Yolanda attended one of Selena's concerts. This is when she became a super fan of Selena. After the concert, she started calling Selena's father, Abraham, non-stop. And what was she calling for? She wanted to make a fan club for Selena. 
Abraham, Selena's father, eventually gave her permission to start the fan club. In his own words, he said that she seemed genuine and that she seemed very excited to work for Selena. Yolanda actually quit her nursing job and became a full-time employee of Selena. It was around the time that Amor Prohibido reached number one in the Latin Billboard charts. Can you imagine the envy this woman must have had for Selena? Yolanda in interviews would say that Selena was her idol. Okay, but let's talk about this foundation because I haven't used foundation in a couple of months. It's from Essence Cosmetics and look at the glow. Where's that coming from? After a couple of years of working with Selena, Yolanda was not only managing the fan club, she was also helping Selena open her two clothing boutiques. This meant she had a lot of access to Selena. In an interview, Abraham said that he started noticing that Yolanda was becoming obsessed with Selena. For example, if Selena was at a concert, Yolanda would physically act as a barrier between Selena and her fans. Abraham told her, this is not your job. We have bodyguards for that. She wanted Selena all to herself. Eventually, some of the employees from the boutique started complaining about Yolanda. The employees started to complain that she had mismanaged funds from the fan club. In other words, she was embezzling money from the fan club. How could she claim that Selena was her idol, that she loved her, that she wanted to help her while you're stealing money from her? But you guys, it doesn't stop there. The employees also said that she was destroying designs. Same designs that were being made for the boutique, Yolanda was destroying those designs. And she was even threatening the employees. And the cherry on top, she was recording the employees. This is when Abraham started investigating all of the claims that the employees were making. And indeed, he found that she had embezzled $30,000. Then he started getting complaints from the members of the fan club saying that they had paid their dues but had not received any merchandise. You know what's so terrifying? That Yolanda was acting like a saint in front of Selena to these employees, she was being terrible. She was abusing them. Unfortunately, Selena never believed that Yolanda would be capable of such a thing. March 9th of 1995, Selena and her father Abraham decide to confront Yolanda about the embezzlement. Abraham said that during the confrontation, Selena was very emotional because she couldn't believe that Yolanda would be capable of such a thing. But Yolanda, on the other hand, was defensive and said she just didn't know about any of it. So she basically denied everything. During the confrontation, Abraham told Yolanda that they would get the police involved if she did not return the funds. You guys, two days after that, she purchases a gun. She told the gun store that she had been having problems with the family of an elderly person that she had been taking care of because she was a nurse and that she was buying the gun for protection. But like I said before, Selena refused to believe that she would be capable of any of this. Selena did not cut Yolanda off and this made Yolanda really happy. In fact, Selena asked Yolanda to help her open up another boutique store in Monterrey, Mexico. Guess what Yolanda did? She returned the gun. Yolanda was so happy that she hadn't been cut off, she went and returned the gun. But a few days after that conversation, Selena started asking Yolanda for some important documents that she needed to return to them. And what did Yolanda do? She went and repurchased the gun. Is that not as premeditated as it can get? The day after the confrontation, Yolanda decided to show up to the recording studio and Abraham did not let her in. In fact, he kicked her out. Police believe that this is one of the events that triggered her into buying the gun in the first place. On March 30th, Yolanda checks into a Days Inn motel. That very night, Selena comes over at 11 p.m. and this is when Yolanda gives her the documents. And Selena goes home to Chris, her husband. But later on that night, Yolanda calls Selena and tells her that she had been raped in Mexico. Selena did not quite believe her, but she also didn't want to leave her hanging. But unfortunately, we all know that Selena decided to go by herself. In fact, Chris was still asleep in bed when Selena left the house. She picks up Yolanda in the morning and takes her straight to the hospital. The doctors at the hospital decide to run some tests on Yolanda since she claimed that she was raped, but they couldn't find anything because she wasn't raped. This is when Selena takes some of the nurses aside and tells her that she doesn't believe that she was raped and that her friend was making it all up. Selena drives Yolanda back to the motel. Because Yolanda has never spoken the truth about what actually happened, police can only predict that Selena was extremely emotional and angry at her during the ride back to the hotel. So let's just recap some of the things that Yolanda did. She embezzled $30,000 from the fan club. She hadn't even been sending the merchandise to the people who had signed up and paid the fees for the fan club. She was abusing and mistreating her employees at the boutique by threatening them, secretly recording them, and destroying designs for the boutique. On top of everything, she calls her in the middle of the night to tell her that she had been raped and that she needs to be taken to the hospital, only to find out that the rape never happened. Selena must have made it very clear that the relationship between them was over. Yolanda would have been panicking and grasping at straws. This is when Yolanda says they got to the hotel room and Selena took off their friendship ring. Yolanda, a couple of years back, had gifted Selena a friendship ring and they both wore the same ring. This is when Yolanda claims that she had the gun and that she grabbed it so that she could herself. Selena decides to turn around and exit the room. This is when Yolanda says that the gun went off in her hands. She claims that she ran after Selena to try to help her. Yolanda still claims that she never saw blood 
Therefore, she didn't know that Selena had been shot. Norma Martinez was working at the motel that morning. She claims to have seen Yolanda running after Selena, pointing the gun at her, calling her a bitch. This is an eyewitness account, so they couldn't really prove that it had happened. If this is true, Yolanda knew that she had shot Selena, and she was running after her to shoot at her again. Selena had been shot in the shoulder, and the reason she died is because the bullet hit an artery. She was bleeding out extremely fast. According to eyewitness accounts, Yolanda then walked back into the room. She was not trying to help Selena. This is what happened to Selena gets shot in the back, she runs out of the room and runs straight into the lobby. This is when she says, Yolanda Saldivar, room 158, and then she passes out. While Selena Quintanilla is bleeding out on the hotel lobby, Yolanda is trying to figure out what to do. This is when a nine and a half hour standoff ensues with the police and Yolanda. This is where police believe that Yolanda got the idea to claim it was an accident. One of the negotiators that got on the phone with her told her that it's okay because it might have been an accident. Maybe the gun went off by mistake. This is when Yolanda says, yeah, it was a mistake. Before that comment, Yolanda had not claimed that. At this point, there's hundreds of people standing outside of the hotel asking Yolanda to come out of the car. Selena was pronounced dead an hour after she got to the hospital. Six months later, on October 1995, Yolanda was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. But she is up for parole March 2025. That's exactly 30 years after she killed Selena. While I was doing my research, I found an episode on Selena. Let me show you guys this clip because it actually disgusted me. She trusted everybody, anybody. I don't think she ever met anybody that she didn't trust immediately and like immediately. And I think that probably was one of the reasons for the for her downfall. Essentially, this man is victim blaming. How can he say that because Selena decided to trust Yolanda, it was her downfall? This is all Yolanda's fault. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a follow here and on Instagram. I love you guys. Bye. First thing I want to get across is uh, the, the fact that uh, the governor of the state of Texas has offered $50,000 for the uh, capture of this uh, the suspect, uh, multi-county crime stoppers, which includes Montgomery, San Jacinto, and Liberty counties, has thrown in 5000 for a total of $55,000. Um, tonight, at, or this evening here in about an hour and a half at 4.30, they're doing a vigil for the eight-year-old that went to Northside Elementary in Cleveland, Texas. My heart is with this eight-year-old little boy, I don't, I don't care if he was here legally. I don't care if he was here illegally. He was in my county. Five people died in my county, and that is where my heart is, in my county, protecting my people to the best of our ability. Good afternoon. I'd like to announce that the FBI is also offering an additional $25,000 for the apprehension of this subject. So it brings the total amount of the reward to $80,000. If anybody, whether you are here in this county or this state of Texas or around the country, have any tips, we're asking you to please call 1-800-FBI-TIPS. 24-7, this phone line will be available. If anyone has any information, that could lead to the arrest of this subject. Cuando oí tu voz, supe que había encontrado el amor de mi corazón.